You've got to ignite the light, everybody. Welcome to the Football Ramble. Controversy at Newcastle and Sheffield United 1. It's Monday, 6th of November. I'm Marcus Speller. I'm Maddie Russell. I'm Jim Campbell. And I'm Vidisha Nantaraja. Oof, good to have you here, everybody. Monday, you're at work, and so are we, technically, Jim Campbell. Um, but it's good that we can have this meeting of minds. Andy Brassel, good to have you back in the pod. Oh, thanks. Thank you for coming. Nice sir. to be here. Andy, I'd like you to start, because it was it was a very contentious weekend of football in the Premier League. Uh, there was some great goals. There were some great happenings. It's just what you want from arguably the finest league in the world. And that point was very much argued upon uh, by one individual. But before we come to all that, let's have some highlights of the weekend. Andy Brassel, would you kick us off? Well, my highlight of the weekend starts in a quite inauspicious way, I suppose. Mm. Roma, in the 91st <sighs> minute, are losing at home to Lecce. And then what uh, happens, Romelu, Romelu Lukaku's missed a penalty in the early stages. He'll do that. They've, 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 they've let in a goal. Uh, they've run out of ideas. Nowhere. Completely. Nowhere. Then, 91st minute. <laughs> and they run out 1-0 losers. <laughs> S- yeah. Sada Asmun equalises. Yeah. Great, great header. Yeah. And then, Romelu Lukaku, who's missed the penalty, mm. set up by Paolo Dybala, who has looked so unfit. It's like he's been running through treacle mm-hmm. for the entire game. He sets up Lukaku. Lukaku scores, goes nuts, tears his shirt off. There are tears. Mourinho's kissing Usim Awar yeah. on, on, on the sideline. Is that the opposition manager? <laughs> and what, 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 yeah. what, what is it that uh, Verbal says in The Usual Suspects? He says, the biggest trick the devil ever played yeah. is making you believe that scraping a home win against Lecce is a massive achievement. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Did Mourinho do the crying eyes to the opposition bench? <laughs> not, this, not this week. Not uh, this he week. didn't need to, I suppose. Uh, Jim, you're a highlight of the weekend. Well, it was a bountiful weekend for highlights, wasn't it? Some, some great bark. <laughs> on display um, but I'm going to go for something that actually will, will be relevant a lot of weekends in yeah. this or any season um, because David Moyes did it on Match of the Day in the post-match and then Martin Keown picked it up it's a reference to Keystone Cops yeah. uh, a slapstick silent comedy uh, series of movies from well over a hundred years ago <laughs> Almost no one who ever uses the reference has ever seen. Let's be honest. It is the little reference that could. It, yeah. People are referencing the reference. No one knows what it is. It was a 90s and reference. I love it. 1890s. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just love how often it comes up. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, and what was the reference? Uh, it's just that oh, the, just the, the defending Co- was Keystone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. That's just, right, yeah. I just, I'm, I, we need to update our references, I think. No, I don't think we do, Jim. I think that you it's know, police academy stuff. Surely you'd enjoy that. Um, yeah. I do have a naked gun reference coming up. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Fish. Uh, so my highlight from the weekend isn't strictly a highlight from the weekend. It's a okay. highlight from the last month. Now... Okay, on, you've sort of misunderstood the brief. Here. Well, wait. Uh, this, this is my quali- this is what I think helps my point qualify or my highlight qualify for this particular section because yesterday... Hmm. Drugheader United FC from the League of Ireland Premier Division, they dropped their goals of the month competition that you could vote on. Mm -hmm. Now, those of us who are familiar with the League of Ireland Mm -hmm. acknowledge the fact that it's a regular contributor to the Puskas Awards. Mm. There's Mm. always one banger from the League of Ireland in the Puskas Awards. It might have only happened once or twice, but I take the point. This uh, compilation from Drugheader United, who are mid, I think in the bottom half of the League of Ireland Premier Division, is two minutes, 16 seconds of some of the best goals you will ever see. <laughs> I and It dropped on my feed and I was like, oh, you know, I'll give this a watch. And honestly, every type of goal, long range banger, pass from the back, just Scorpion volleys. Kick. You know what? Probably. I, haven't, yeah. I probably should watch it again. It is unbelievable and I recommend you checking it out. It is one of the so best what, goal compilations you can see on, from one club so where, in where, a month. Where exactly then? Would you say again the name of the... the... Uh, Drogheda United FC Drogheda. at Drogheda, Drogheda United on... X on X, thank you. Yeah. Uh, See that one. That, that reminds me of uh, FC Basel, famous European club. FC Basel. Yes. Their goal of the month uh, Didn't have it. competition. Yeah, no, no goals in October. <laughs> no goal of the month competition. Yeah. yeah. Well, they should just default to these boys then, shouldn't they? We yeah, haven't got this, but here's a, yeah. is, 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 is a treat for you. Um, my highlight of the weekend has to be the Copa Libertadores final. Fluminense mm. winning their first ever one yeah. in that lovely kit, Jim Cam. Lovely, lovely kit. Lovely, uh, lovely. One of the kits. great kits of the world. Yeah, oh, yeah maybe. They don't need, you don't need an away kit with that kit, do you? That's true. They've sort of game the system. Well, yeah. like maybe you do in Brazil, where all the kits are, you know, 
They're a bit Similarly mad. Good. Yeah, yeah. Fair you don't need you don't need pajamas if you're going for a sleepover either, do you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose with that kit, another Brazilian side probably has it, but in a hooped version. Yeah. Okay. Almost <laughs> uh, certainly. Yeah, but it was it was it was a great win. Um, and who got the remedy? John Kennedy. Scored the goal, Big John, uh, wonderfully named. When I heard Kennedy had scored, I thought, former Newcastle man? I know, of course, it's not the same yeah. one. That would have been too much of a Marcelo stretch. completing the set. Marcelo yeah. started the game for Fluminense. Her, that her man Cano scored the first goal for, yeah. um, for Fluminense. And I don't know if you remember, I thought a man had called me a loser while I was wearing my Fluminense kit in the gym. And it was Herman. But it was actually, he was replicating Herman Cano's celebration, ah. which is an L uh, representing Lorenzo, the name of his son. So no, lovely to see him pop up. Lovely, right, lovely. Yeah. And the manager, um, Fernando Diniz, his celebration is one of... It, it, there was so much going on at the, uh, after the the final whistle when when they when they were crowned champions. He, it, it was David Pleat in there, a little bit of a gallop. It was Mourinho at New Camp. He was on the pitch. There was Robbie Keane. There was a forward role. It was it had everything, and he looks a bit like the um, the character from Naked Gun Two and a Half, the wonderfully named Quentin Hapsburg. <laughs> um, so there you are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a lot of good references in there for you. I mean, was was please listen thinking... to the rest of the pod. Is what I would I would sort of um, I was say. Fernando Diniz is thinking that if I keep running you can't take the Brazil job off me <laughs> <laughs> was there a man with the P45 running after yeah, no no no, no. Uh, you could do that you could do that in one of the mid 90s FIFA games couldn't you you could run away from the referee if he tried to book you that was a thing wasn't yeah. it yeah and then I think every now and again he'd stop and give you a red card <laughs> yeah it was a bit of a gamble he'd either yeah. go alright fine get off with it or no I'm not having this you're yeah. taking the piss um, there we are what a, what, a, what a win it was for Fluminense against Boca Juniors um, of course the real <laughs> highlight of the weekend was uh, the new Football Ramble mailbag, which dropped on Saturday. If you haven't listened, then do so. Uh, myself, Vish, and Luke answered your questions, and we heard a lovely story about Big Ange going to the theatre. So new episodes will be out every other Saturday, so watch out for the next episode on the 18th of November. Right, everybody, let's get down to it. Newcastle United 1, Arsenal 0. Um, Jim Campbell. I'm surprised this has made it in. It was <laughs> what a boring game. <laughs> <laughs> what I love, though, oh after God. the goal, I think it was a match of the day, I'm quite sure, after the goal, which was scored in the 64th minute, it was basically that was it. There yeah. was no more highlights because the talking point, the, all the talking point. There was three obvious ones. We'll start with the goal, shall we? Yeah. Because within that, you've got three talking points. I actually think there's a fourth one. That's okay. In. But okay. We'll, we'll come on to that. Should we do it bit by bit? Far so away. I think actually, firstly, the thing that needs to be said um, is how unprecedented this is that you'd have this many in one incident, and of mm. course, it's going to take ages. I wonder if the VARs rushed it a bit because of that reason. So the first, the first. First one will obviously be did the ball go out of play or not? There's a there's an image circling around that makes it look very much like it did. But of course, as in with that goal for Japan at the World Cup, you've yes. got to take in the sort of the sort of curvature of the ball and mm. whether that is over the line. Essentially, we we just can't know. Yeah, yeah we, we, exactly. We, we don't know what one image makes it look <clears> like. Oh, maybe it is out, but mm. one makes it look like it doesn't. Being sport, mocked one up. Um, and so that was just for is, Keyes' We don't benefit. know. It was just for Keyes, like so much. Um, <laughs> it's, we, so we don't know on that one. I initially... Did he rule out dark forces? I do, do you know what? <laughs> Never rule those out. Okay. Never rule those out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he summoned them again. Yeah. <laughs> the In real time, I thought it was offside. Right. Um, but again... <clears throat> I haven't seen any proper way where you can determine that, which is how rare is that? Well, yeah. it's very like it, it, on its own, that is so yeah. rare, let alone among all these things. And this was bound to happen because we forget with VAR, it is the cameras. There are certain that you can't have cameras covering all 360 degrees of, of the incident. No. So Although this, I've this heard was, at least one pundit suggest that we, we do that. Right. Was, the, it, was the, it Lars Sivertsen? The, 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 the we have, I think it was Glenn Murray on Match of the Day too, wasn't it? Very, it, it, it was bloody it, futuristic. That's like bloody Fritz Lang's Metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jim. Instead of saying, why, why, why isn't there goal line technology everywhere through, everywhere through all the lines of the pitch? I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, sure. Um, <laughs> so the, the, the worst one for me, I think, uh -huh. is the... Is the, the foul. I think it is a foul. Right. I think he's got both hands on him. Um, also, oh, the, this, the bonus one that's snuck in there, the ball actually comes off of Joe Linton's <clears throat> hand or his arm yeah, in yeah. that. And it happens so fast, it's hard to say whether he sort of, it's probably a stretch to say he controlled it with his arm. Mm. Well, he certainly pushing benefited the from the, the bounce of it. Yeah, mm. and, he, and he, I think he just pushed Gabriel over. And, you know, 
there's a couple of incidents where Newcastle players just pushed players. Well, over come and on, we'll get yeah, to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I personally, I do, I do think that that is a foul and that that goal should not have stood. Um, the reaction to it is obviously apoplectic, really, really mm. massive and, mm. and over mm. the top. But it is an emotional thing, isn't it? It's an, and and that and people are yeah. Disagree. Vish, what did you uh, make of it? It's funny, wasn't it? <laughs> I, um, I, I, I broadly agree with him I actually didn't think it was a foul until I ended up re-watching it on Sunday uh-huh. and I was like oh yeah actually that's too long for a VAR you... check on yeah, Sunday I know but is it uh, there was a moment right you're going to have to go away the local hotels you're going to do very well out yeah. of this so th- this <laughs> replay is... <laughs> yeah you know like you, you know if you're if you're really lucky when you're in jury duty it's just going on for ages yeah yeah, yeah. right um, so uh Never done it, it. It was very strange. No, nor have I. Mm. Well, I'm not a good man and true. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the the strangest a thing. Of, list? <laughs> <laughs> maybe they don't release it, do they? Right. Well. Um, the um, the the thing I found really funny was I, I think clearly VAR and people at Stockley Park were aware of how unique a situation it was mm-hmm. because Gary Neville had a direct line to the well, all commentators had a direct line to the feed. Mm-hmm. And so Gary Le- Neville was actually, you know, doing quite a sensible thing and giving people an update and saying, VA, I've asked for more time here. Yeah. Like they just put in a request for more time. Mm-hmm. Which, which I, th- I think is kind of fair enough. With, totally with three enough. incidents, yeah. Yeah, and exactly. a secret incident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the... Um, Jeremy Varr and Jim spotted. <laughs> I, I think... I pr- promise you it isn't just me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I realised when they were going through that that I think I'm developing a bit of Stockholm Syndrome with Varr right. because Gary Neville having you know, access to the feed, he shouted goal before the referee confirmed it. And I thought, yeah. well, don't spoil it, mate. Yeah, yeah. I want the I want the whistle and the point. You're we not sh- the we, bellwether. We should say on the on the point of Gary Neville, he obviously um was 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 uh I, I I maybe not thinking straight because he retweeted our very own Luke Moore. He did. Yeah and, and actually uh, It shows uh, how peculiar a situation it was. It was yeah. <laughs> indeed yeah we, we should say though actually I, I I thought Luke summed it up very very well on the thread as obviously Agreed. Mr Neville did as well. Agreed. So again something for you to do everybody a little and, bit more uh, homework there. But Andy what were your thoughts well, on Well I incident? think I think that's the thing as as Luke pointed out I don't think any of the three decisions are heinous. That's why I find oh, yeah, I the the Arteta reaction. They're they're all they're all a bit subjective. So while I find the Arteta reaction and the statement that follows it, which is just absolutely repellent, by the way. Yeah, I, well, it's, it's, just, it's just it's just really gaslighty to stand there. How is it going to make officiating better mm. to what, just completely misrepresent the situation, which is what he's done. That is the disgrace, yeah. not the decision. Well, indeed. Deliberately misrepresenting what actually happened. Arteta said that... Just because, because people don't really want justice when they're going on a massive Twitter rant about this. They want it to go for their team. So, and, and so and to claim otherwise, is just, it's, it's just transparently not true. So Arteta said, I mean, he said the decision was embarrassing and a disgrace. And obviously Arsenal since released a statement saying the club wholeheartedly supports um, Mikel Arteta and they've, they've written to uh, Pugmol and said... The apology posse. <laughs> yeah. I thought, well, this shouldn't be hard to get an apology from them. <laughs> no, it's like, no, I don't want one. I, don't, I won't even take your apology. I'm, I'm going to salt that earth in advance. Uh, yeah, well, they um, yeah, they said that uh, the officiating needs to be a high standard. The Premier League says it's the best league in the blah, 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 blah. Is it fair to say that Arsenal, Jim, as a collective, including every single one of their fans, has embarrassed and disgraced themselves? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Actually, respected broadcaster Richard Keyes agrees with Mikel Arteta. They're, so that... That's, <laughs> again, again, Jim, it, uh, you know, there's certain you know, with regards to certain votes and certain referendums, you know, if people would say, "Oh, well, I don't, I'm not sure," I just say, "Just see who's saying what." Yeah, <laughs> that so, should yeah. that should sort of. Fit. So, and and so, do we need more confirmation that the right decision was made? You you have um um put me in disgrace there. So I would ask that you still hear me out. Let, let me have my last words from this from the gallows here. Jim Campbell um, respond. <laughs> Any final I think, words? I, the ob- obviously the uh, I'll have a final statement later. Hmm. The on um, GB news. The yeah. statement is obviously completely unnecessary. Right. Um and look, look, there's there's no doubt about that. I I can I think it's quite funny just from where I'm sat. I think okay. that just says more about my personality than mm-hmm. anything else. But I think what this has come from um <laughs> is I think there's a lot of groupthink around PGMOL at the moment, uh-huh. uh, where we've had the situation with Liverpool earlier in the season. Now, uh-huh. that was a lot more cut and dry. Very different. But, but, clearly, Very different. but clearly, internally, Arsenal don't think it is different. Arsenal think that that, that, that mm. decision is wrong. They feel like they've been that they've lost a, at mm. least a point there. Um, realistically, probably a point the way the game went out. Mm. Um, so, I, 
you know, that's an extreme position, but mm -hmm. it's the position they've taken. But there was a Liverpool statement earlier, and I'm not blaming Liverpool for this as well, because it was going on all last season as well. Gary O'Neill's been very vocal. Uh, pretty much every every team somewhere yeah. has had a decision where they're like, this is getting ridiculous now. Mm -hmm. The PGMO aren't, MOL aren't fit for purpose, et cetera, et cetera. This narrative is building. And I think it's actually happening within the clubs as well. And this stuff is happening because I think there's a sense that the standards aren't high enough and that something <clears throat> has to give. And it is unedifying that clubs are putting out official statements, kind of pushing this narrative. Yeah. But I think that is kind of, that's where it's coming from. And, you know, it's... Um, I, I, it's a, a kind of a situation of their own making to a degree because there's been so much inconsistency mm -hmm. and it's the, the attempts to explain things haven't really cleared anything mm -hmm. up. And I, you've also got this situation. <clears throat> I know this is a separate point, um, but I think a lot of people are saying, oh, the referee shouldn't be taking gigs in the Middle East. And we, we, we should refer to Hanlon's, Hanlon's razor here, which is the idea that if something um, something should never be ascribed to malice that is easily explained away by incompetence, something like that. There's, mm -hmm. there's, I don't think for a second there's a conspiracy here, but the PGMOL are trying to make itself look like this really, really professional organisation that are based on integrity mm -hmm. and just, you know, standards. And for them to allow their referees to go and referee in countries um, that own Premier League clubs is just really unserious. You know, it's a mm. it's a it's a very clear conflict of in interest. I'm not for a second saying there's a conspiracy, mm -hmm. but it's like you've got to nix that. You've got to, <laughs> yeah, to nix yeah. any possibility of it or any suggestion of sure, it. Sure, but I I mean I think that's a, a by the by point though. At the, at yeah, the moment, like I say, a separate point. Yeah. I understand that you're trying to grasp at straws, Jim. At any <laughs> any chance of a I've, replay? I've got some stuff I wrote um, in the aftermath of the game. If you want, it's a lot less measured. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I've kept it in the notes. Uh, yeah, well, just screenshot those um, comments from the Daily Mail if you could. I never <laughs> thought I'd say. This. Can I hear more from Jim? <laughs> Bruno Gimaraishi's parents have done an appalling job. <laughs> they should be ashamed of themselves and of him. Okay, well, look, let's. So we've talked about the goal. Let's talk about the other two decisions. Kai Havertz, should he have been sent offish or was it a booking? Um, I thought he. Come on, you've I, had a few I, days. So I thought he. Um... Check's still going on, mate. You'd Whether... be a dreadful VAR guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd just, pre oh, no, just press a button straight away. Would you? Yeah. Uh huh. Big red button. Um, so I thought he actually ended up playing it quite smartly because as he dives in for the tackle, mm -hmm. and I think the intent alone it should be a red, but he did, does very well to keep his studs parallel to the ground because it, it means that by the point of contact with the player, right. he's he's kind of like scything him rather than chopping him, if that makes sense. Yeah, if, you can, if you can differentiate yeah, yeah, between yeah. the two. Right. Um, I, I thought it was... I mean, he was clearly out of control. He was clearly doing that because... A few seconds earlier, he'd been kind of like, as was going on through the game, he'd been he'd been nudged and lost his head a little bit, and I think he ended up playing quite badly mm. after that. So was it a red card? Uh, yeah, I think it was a red card. You thought it yeah, was a red yeah. Card, yeah. Right? but I, but I think the reason he, I think the reason he was able to survive it, uh -huh. <laughs> and get three new cards of players books was genius, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> was, was, was because he actually exhibit he ended up exhibiting control that he, that helped him out in that situation mm. right at the, the last moment. Yeah, and he but, looked, but he looked like the victim in the melee. Yeah, that was the yeah. funny thing. Did but you, but it was sorry, go on. Go on. Did you think it was a sending off? Yeah, hundred percent. Did you? Yeah. I thought it was an orange card. I thought it was really. A, it but you know the thing been... about that is they don't fucking exist, mate. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So therefore, it's a yellow for me. Yeah. Well, I think it should. It it was a red that should have been rescinded to a yellow once he shushed Jason Tindall. There you go. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> official position. On Excellent. It. Yeah. The, the 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 great thing about that incident, I th like for, for the neutral definitely, and, and I suppose for the for the Newcastle fan is it really. I don't know that many teams do this particularly well, apart from maybe Liverpool at their best, but. Newcastle have this great kind of recycling of energy mm -hmm. at St. James's Park, mm -hmm. whereby the players end up working with the noise that is generated from the stands and end up, you know, basically cycling that all back in there. Yeah. And you end up in this almost a cyclone mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of noise and yeah, feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they use that so well because they play very good football. There's a lot of talk last season, rightly, about how much time they waste. Mm -hmm. And obviously referees are hot on that now. Mm -hmm. And they're just playing it slightly differently. Yeah. And I think, as we mentioned on Friday when previewing this game, I anticipate it being a bit of a, a, a more physical, robust challenge of Arsenal. And by and large, I thought Arsenal dealt well with that. But within that, you actually go in and you end up seeing they do it with a lot of discipline. Yeah. In terms, sorry, in terms of like tactical and footballing discipline, whereby yeah, everyone's everyone's up for it. Everyone's shouting after every tackle. Saka gets the ball and three people are on him. Mm -hmm. The ball moves square and. 
everyone kind of moves around on that you know I suppose on that plane without the ball I would agree with that I think I think Newcastle are really annoying but they're really, very annoying. They're really annoying in a very different way. It's not Lascelles hold stand on the touchline. Well, because he's actually playing now. Mm. Stand on the touchline, holding on to the ball. It's Anthony Gordon. It's Bruno Guimaraes. It's Joe Linton, who, who just does, won't how stop. Much does it's Tind- absolutely does relentless. Tind- Tindall Tindall take, as well. Yeah. How much does Tyndall take credit for this? Because it's oh, in terms of being irritating. Well, in terms of yeah, in yeah, terms yeah, yeah, of yeah. the the That's temperament of the side and and the steel, because we don't have an awful lot of um, you know examples of Eddie Howe teams. Really, it's Bournemouth is the, the large bit. Obviously, Burnley. Yeah, yeah. Quite so well. different. It's very different. But right. Tyndall was with Howe at Bournemouth, though. Can I just say? I think actually the most controversial point of this this game was the Bruno Gimmerish, um I agree. Um, uh, whatever you want to call it, to me that was that's the a one. straight red to me. Yeah, to, he to, it's totally. ridiculous. Why did they? He's, why did they look at that? With, they did look at it. They did. They can, well, I, I, he's, he's got away with a few of those this season. And really, I think Eddie got to blame the, the parents. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a tricky one because, the, 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 you know, Joao Polina had one against Brighton, a very similar kind of situation. And I think it's difficult to determine, is he actually trying to, you know, probably oh, this is him? cut and dry though, isn't it? Well, if, oh, if, come on. Well, it's, it, I think it's difficult to say, is he trying to sort of push him out the way as he goes? I, come on, that, I, that first one, there can be no doubt. It's a deliberate, there can be no doubt. It is a, it's a deliberate foul on him. The debate goes on. To it, but he wasn't <laughs> giving it, it was a good win for Newcastle yeah. United. Can we actually... We've forgotten about Anthony we've Gordon's for, finish, haven't we've we? We've forgotten about the brilliant finish. Yeah. Yeah. We've forgot, the, the game itself was was very, very tight. As you said, um, Vish, they're very, very tough to break down. They're, they're horrible to play against. Yeah. So yeah. I do mean that as a compliment as well. I think Arsenal didn't create enough and they're in a they're in a sort of blip of form. The Sheffield United at home game is obviously mm. a very sort of different proposition, but they they weren't great against West Ham with a lot of changes. Um, the, the Chelsea game, you know, they, they, they got themselves in a hole and they really, really need to get out of this sort of patchy run of form and essentially stay out of it for the rest of the season given the standards of the league now well, Tottenham, I... Tottenham are playing tonight and, and obviously that that means that Tottenham are the only unbeaten team left in the Premier League um, so all to play for of course mm. Arsenal are take fourth. a note to trivia fans very much so very much so um, other further bad news for Arsenal is their under 18s match uh, it was postponed this weekend because the team bus travelled to Bournemouth instead of Brighton Yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> do they get a replay is the that drivers, embarrassing oh, and a disgrace in form yeah indeed um, gentlemen uh, we must move on and talk about Luton Town 1 Liverpool 1 Luton denied a famous victory by a stoppage time goal from Luis Diaz and uh, unless you're a Luton fan I don't think anybody can begrudge yeah. Luis Diaz that because obviously, obviously a lot of neutrals watching the game you're thinking blimey this would be such a seismic result but of course when he scores and we're reminded of what's going on in his um, in his personal life revealing the message you know freedom for Papa we would translate to under yeah. his shirt so he's been through I mean, can't Im- even imagine um, but it was ultimately a result we didn't think Luton would get Vish so of course they're going to be disappointed nearly um, holding on for uh, a, a victory but but impressive stuff from them yeah it was I, I think you know Liverpool should have won this game yeah well I think, I think on the people, balance of chances alone well we go back to Glenn Murray and uh, I think it was Dion Dublin and, and the punditry and they said well I, I, you know Jurgen Klopp said it was a fair result and they were like mm, I don't know I thought Luton looked good and I was like well they did ride their luck an awful lot yeah yeah no I, I, thought, I thought Liverpool Obviously, they're disappointed not to win it, but I thought they had chances to win it, um, particularly our man, Darwin. Mm-hmm. It was, it, it, it was, was like we've concocted him from the round ball. I think so, yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, it, it was it, that one where he hit the bar, where he chested it Gorgeous. Down, mm. Would have been fantastic. Yeah. Amazing. But such is the chaos of Darwin Nunes mm. that him missing an open goal makes me utterly convinced he's going to score the winner. Yeah. 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 The... Um, I mean, Luton were exceptional. I thought, like w- one of the um, one of the things I thought they did really well is how, when they were clearing their lines, they were carrying the ball forward. I think a lot of times when teams play Liverpool and they are totally up against it, they make the mistake of just hoofing the ball long, which actually just invites invites that tidal wave of pressure that Liverpool always bring because they just attack you in waves. Yeah, and you know, Gravenbach was good. Um, Harvey Elliott was excellent when he came on, but. Luton, like Ogbené, I thought like the way he carried the ball particularly was was really good, and their fullbacks as well, Kabore and um, mm. Alfie Doughty, who I think he's a full namer, isn't he? We have to solly march him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially yes, yes. your Alfie Doughty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but <laughs> it's a full name. The, the the player who like I have to give immense credit for because I just didn't think he had it in him. Ross Barkley. Yes. Yeah. For the goal, the penultimate pass. Yeah. Is perfect, and that's what 
a properly fit Ross Barkley and mm-hmm. presumably in time a properly fit Andros Townsend as senior. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what he adds because I think if you go back to the beginning of the season, there's lots of merit in what Luton do. And there's lots of merit in what Rob Edwards is doing. There's no way they play that break right yes. five yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. But mm. they played it absolutely perfectly. And as you were saying, under the, under the pump for a, a, a lot of the game. And so to have that clarity in mm. that moment... Mm. It's super hard. Oh, they, they did it so well. I, I, you're absolutely right, and, and full credit to them for that. The one thing I was really gutted about was when Ogbeni decided to pass. Yes. I was like, you could have scored one of the greatest goals we've seen in modern times. The way he kind of he's in his own half when he starts. Now, now Trent does track him, so but he ultimately goes past him and then skins Canate as well. And you're mm. thinking, a curler into the corner. I mean, this is Rod Wallace stuff, Andy. Um, <laughs> yes! It really is. Does that count as an 80s reference? Uh, would it have been 90s, Rod that, Wallace? That would have start been in both, wouldn't he? Oh, he was active. Yes. I'm saying the goal was probably early 90s, maybe. It was genuinely so closer yeah, to Leeds, Keystone right? Cops. Yeah. <laughs> In this game, <laughs> we're edging towards <laughs> it. Um, but it was, yeah, anyway, uh, it would have been glorious. I, I just think he was knackered. I think he was yeah, like, oh, do you know, yeah. I'm going to pass it. And it still created a chance, yeah. which Alison saved very well. But ah, oh, what a goal that would have been. Still, though, I mean, that is a point they would not have been banking on, right? They, they'd take that at the beginning. That's what they and have to tell them. Agreed. Huge, huge Agreed. like platform to build on. Yeah. And, like, you know, they've got to make the place difficult to come to. And they're, they're clearly starting to do that. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. I think that. The fact is that they were under the cosh. Liverpool did miss some great chances. And then when Liverpool equalised, you know, are they then going to go on and get get the winner? All things considered, yes. Yeah. But they are gutted that they never got a famous victory. They are. We should also call out the tragedy chanting from Luton fans. Yeah. Um, I know it happens a lot of, a lot of places and you, you don't always hear it on TV. Um, so Luton aren't alone in doing it, but it's bullshit. And yeah. it should stop yeah. um, across the board. Absolutely. On yeah. a lo- lovelier note, I do enjoy how Jamie Carragher says chonga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that, I mean, enjoyable. He was a good form character on the weekend. He was, yeah. yeah. You know uh, the Luton Town dog? No. The, the Kenilworth Road, you know, they, there's a, well, Kennel, a lab, Lord. I think. Yeah. A Labrador. Not a lab, they're I not creating like a dog lab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the dog, very cute, very sweet, very quiet. He looks very old. Oh, no. And I don't think the Premier League, with all its issues, is ready to mourn the passing of a dog. Mm. I, I hate to, I hate to say sad. this. It'll just they are to on... Norwich or Ipswich. You'll be fine. <laughs> 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 you, you, know, <laughs> you know how um, FC Com have their goat mascot, Hennis? Mm. They're on Hennis the Seventh now. Oh, do they yeah, but, do they phrase it like that? Yeah, yeah but, but oh, Hennis, they, they, it's they, like a pope. But Hennis, <laughs> the name Hennis lends itself to Hennis the Seventh. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it does. Hennis the Menace. Presumably, he is a menace. Yeah. You, would, you, would, you would think so. I mean, yeah, that would be very, very sad, of course. Yeah, if, if that, I mean, it, it, look, it just looks quite old. It does look quite. I mean, but I mean the whole. The whole stadium is very old, isn't it? It's just all old down there. I mean, did you see that? The, the, they're not going to the, bury the dog with the stadium, are they? I don't know. I don't think they're going to bury the stadium. That would be quite <laughs> a feat. But um, <laughs> a new one on top of it. But mind you, though, the stadium is playing its part in that because did you see in the in the, the one of the toilets the roof fell through? You know, oh. yeah. It's mm. not I don't know if you're sat on the can when that happened. It was, it was in the trough, and it you looked would like sit on the can in a football ground. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, uh, I don't believe anybody was. Imagine hurt. if you were piss jousting in one of those cubicles when it came down. Well, doesn't bear thinking about. I, it. Indeed, I, I think this is the best argument we've had for for going for a break. <laughs> <laughs> See you in a moment. Well, here's a good one for you. I just learned the other day. Ready? Yes, sir. Life is not a waste of time, and time is not a waste of life. So let's stop wasting time, get wasted, and have the time of our lives. Oh, yeah. (laughs) There he is, everybody. Thank you very much to Ali for choosing today's clip. The best clip we've ever had, quite frankly. He's a moron. On a Monday, that is heinous. He's a bald moron. (laughs) Pitbull is, is like, every day's the weekend for him. He's like, I, I can't control him. There's no gate, there's no keys, he's just out there. Um, and that's what he gets up to. You can choose the break jingle for next Monday show or, uh, of course, the intro line for the show. On Wednesday, just hit the link in the show notes uh, to sign up for the Football Round Patreon and become a friend of the Ramble. Right, gentlemen, before we go back to the Premier League, let's depart these shores and go to Germany, where England's Harry Kane uh, scored a hat-trick as Bayern beat Dortmund 4-0 um, this weekend. Easy peasy. For the big man. It may be a farmer's league, but they've got the proper farmer in town. Absolutely they? right. <laughs> they've got old Stick McDonald in there. Yeah. So, <laughs> old, old McDonaldson was, uh, was, <laughs> was on his flight home from Dortmund, where he was at the weekend, and uh, Charlie Kane was on the plane. That's, so what, he, that's what he claims, yeah. yeah. I mean, it would make sense, of course. That's what Charlie Kane claims. Yeah, and only one of them was at the game. 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> the other went to Dortmund. Just went to Dortmund. Yeah, for which the week. Which accounts like a sort of sort of shit industrial town. Is that right? <laughs> Andy, you've been there. Vish, you have family there. Can you both um, confirm that's true? <laughs> um, I just wondered if Donaldson was there to climb the yellow wall he heard so much about. <laughs> <laughs> also, do we know that Charlie Kane was just outside? Oh, tickets, any tickets, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sell my hog for a ticket. No, I was thinking, well, buy or sell, buy or sell, <laughs> yeah. buy or sell. Yeah, yes. very much so, yeah. Um, Kane has 17 goals and 13 for Bayern now this season. And according to BBC, no player in world football scored more than him uh, so far this season. Became the first player to score 15 goals in his first 10 Bundesliga matches. Which hey. is the more important bit. Yes. Because um, if you look at, you go back a couple of years where Robert Lewandowski, with the last kick of the season, beats Gert Müller's Bundesliga season scoring record. So Lewandowski gets to 41. Mm. And no one in Germany ever thinks it's possible to match or beat that Gerd Müller record. And slightly shorter and, season, and, so a few, Levin, so few, fewer games. And Lewandowski, Lewandowski does it. Yeah. Now, if Kane keeps scoring at the current rate, mm. bear in mind that that high watermark that should have been unbeatable is now 41. Mm. Kane would get to 51 yeah. if he carries on at the, the, the current rate, which is... Just remarkable. Yeah. We have to wait for him to do it, though, Andy. But I like where your head's at. Oh, Andy, uh, we should say that the iconic commentator, Derek Ray, uh, is joining you on uh, on the continent this week to discuss De Classica uh, and a whole lot more. So subscribe to On the Continent now so you don't miss out. Back to the Premier League, everybody, um, after that uh, little German appetizer there. Uh, Sheffield United 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1. They bloody won. An they bloody, they've done it. An absolute robbery. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> absolute robbery. Of course, it was a hundredth minute penalty from Oliver Norwood. And by the way... After Fabio Silva's vicious assault. Well, oh, it was sad to see him crying, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was awful. Mm. Don't like to see that. Um, but in terms of the actual penalty itself, and uh, we, we found a, a challenger for Kevin Pressman's throne. Yeah, yes, yes. And of course, yes. that Kevin Pressman goal in that penalty shootout for Sheffield Wednesday was against Wolves. Yes. And of course, the all the three goals in this yeah. game were lustily hit, weren't they? They were. Mm-hmm. They absolutely were. Cameron I mean, Archer's, uh, what, a, what a great decision to make. Because when you, when you have that much open grass still left in front of you, yeah. you think... Probably two, three more touches there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. recognises the guy's catching up, but yeah, I'll just smash him between the arms. Is it always a good decision to hit it in off the bar in the top corner? Oh, it's one of the best <laughs> ways you can score a goal. In off the underside of the bar, yeah. just below the line, or uh-huh. behind the line. And but, a little but, kiss but on the way back up. Obviously, visibly so. Yeah. And <laughs> from now on, Cameron Archer should be the only player that can do the bow and arrow celebration. Uh, like that's, yeah. that's perfect for him. Perfectly yes, on brand. agreed. Mm. Yeah, we're all agreed on that. He should, go to, he should go to West Ham, so it'd be bow and archer. Like it. Like yes. it. Yes. Yeah, you weren't sure at the start. I but, wasn't. But like Cameron. And it was when, when you went silent, I realised I had to follow through with it. Yeah. I was going to ask for an edit point, decided not to. <laughs> yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad I did. The famous I phrase, did. bow yeah. and Archer. You have asked <laughs> <laughs> You have asked for eight edit points so far on the show, which is a little look behind the curtain. Um, but yes, it was a great win for Sheffield United. A brilliant penalty from Oliver Norwood, who I, I think he thought to himself, I, I've just got to go for this, haven't mm-hmm. I? I really have to. Um, Gary O'Neill said he wasn't going to bother acknowledging the officials anymore after the Newcastle decision, but he was unhappy here. He went into the room with the referee afterwards, didn't he? I asked him to explain how it's a penalty. So did you think it was a penalty, Jim? Uh, I don't think it was a penalty. No. I mean, the it's fact, really, really soft. I think the fact that the referee gave it, I don't think it's going to be overturned. Oh, no, no. And I think that's yeah. it. That's the, that's the thing. I think it was a penalty. Like we, I didn't think it was think, that bad a decision, it, you actually. You think it was a penalty? Yeah, I think it was a penalty. And yeah. I think I, I wasn't just getting at Arteta before. It's the same with O'Neill. Just like breeding this sense of... O'Neill's been on the end of some terrible ones. Yeah, though, they're, they're, they're yeah, some... that, I've got to defend is, future is... England manager Gary O'Neill there <laughs> as a part that, of my that duty. Is, but that, also... is, that is true. But projecting previous decisions on the current referee. Okay. How is that helpful? No, How I is agree. that helpful? No, but that's that's what, that's what happened that's what's happened in this game. He's been so jaded by all this that I understand he's like for come on. And I, so I I disagree with with Gary O'Neill there. Um, but I understand why his his head is um, where it is on that. But I, yeah, I I didn't have any problems with that being given as a, as a, as a penalty. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I I did. I didn't think it was a penalty. I, I also think and this isn't a reason to overturn the decision when they when they were reviewing it. But if you look at when Bordock goes down, he tries to get up straight away and take the ball in towards goal. Mm. So I think there's there's almost a in, in that second an acknowledgement that I don't if there think was I'm contact, it. probably not enough contact. Yeah, within yeah, that, okay. he does I think have a little look up at the referee, doesn't he? But it's, it's like, kind of more you, in hope than expectation. Yeah. What, what do you reckon to that ref? Um, but yeah, mm. uh, but Oliver Norwood, as I say, you know, made the most of it. 
if you're going to get a penalty in controversial circumstances, make sure that you hit a penalty in a way that we're all going to talk about. Yeah, unapologetically. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just hit the target. I hit it as hard as I could. <laughs> Glorious. <laughs> Fuck you, Derby. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't always work out. But certainly um, it did on that um, occasion. Paul Heckingbottom explained that Sheffield United's 5-0 loss to Arsenal last week was all part of their preparation for winning this one. Um, he said, uh, we wanted to stay in a back four against Arsenal because we knew we would be playing a back five against Wolves. I wanted Gary to be preparing for us in a back four to give us as much of an advantage as possible. Mick McCarthy-esque. So, uh, so us getting battered the other week, you all thought that was poor from that us. That makes our form seem more worrying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the away fans, they were all decoys. They were all in on it as well. They didn't mind that at all. And then, bang! What do they do? They get a controversial penalty in the last seconds and it all works out well, Andy Brassel. You see, you shouldn't you should, you shouldn't doubt old Heckingbottom and his methods. But it was a huge win for Sheffield United. It absolutely was. I mean, they are still bottom, but the fact is they're only two points from safety, which is quite damning for the bottom half of the table considering they have lost nine out of 11. But they are now only two <laughs> points from safety. Do you know what I mean? I'm questioning their goal difference at the end of the season if this is a recurring tactic. <laughs> <laughs> Everton may have got up to minus one point in the worst case scenario today as well. So it's yeah. important that they get that win. It's, 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 and it's a good point to make. But I mean, really, if you look at the bottom of the table, you know, you Luton, of course, there on 17th, uh, Bournemouth 18th, Burnley 19th, Sheffield United 20th. I mean, Fulham aren't that far away from them, by the way, I should say. But I mean, Fulham, Wolves and Chelsea all on, on the same points on 12. Who knows who could be sucked into this? It is possible um, for, for, for one of those sides. But I think people are looking at it's really four obvious choices there yeah. um in, in terms of in terms of relegation but we shall see how the old premier league um turns out um the aforementioned bournemouth were hammered 6-1 by manchester city that will happen of course no uh, shame in that especially andy brassel when jeremy doku plays like that well you know how i said he would get turned from an inconsistent promising talent into mm. An absolute world beat about we, Pep Guardiola. There we I go. Didn't, I didn't really imagine it would happen in two months. It's happened quickly. Yeah. It has happened quickly. But he's exactly the sort of player they needed to stretch the game. He's the player they didn't have. And it, he's, he's made an enormous difference. He's brilliant against Brighton the other week as we, well. We saw that in the Champions League in terms of stretching the play when they were away to uh, Leipzig. Leipzig. And, and, and it, you know, just absolutely classic stuff, wasn't it? You know, and the and pace it's, it's, on the break. It's allowing them to get more out of Foden while De Bruyne's out of the team. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. It, 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 Doku scored one, uh, he got four assists. Um, what, I mean, one of them was very unlucky not to be his goal or he's probably gone wide where it, where it went off. Hit um, Kanji. Where it was at Kanji, yeah. So he does get the assist for that. But he also won the most duels um, of any player on the pitch as well. Now, I understand that Perhaps there wasn't that much dueling going on because City was so dominant, you know. Yeah. Uh, but still, it's impressive. It shows you the work work rate um, of the player. And Pep asked, uh, Pep was asked if Doku was one of the best players in the Premier League or Europe, and he replied, "In the world." I said that many times. So oh. in his top three, it's just all City players, isn't it? <laughs> With mean, Bernardo Silva rising all above them. Yeah. Who again? Finished, I thought we finished talking about Ballon d'Or voting last week. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can I throw something at Andy? Because you mentioned Not that Doku... physically, no. no. <laughs> you mentioned that Doku was inconsistent and it feels like everything we've seen from him this season has been just him getting minimal time or playing the whole game and just making correct decision after correct decision. Mm. Is that something he's just suddenly developed? Or did he always have that and the inconsistency was just, I suppose, puffing out his chest a bit? Well, he's, he's, he's had like mostly 25, 30 minute spells in games yeah. where he's looked an absolute world beat. He's but no, no, no more than that. The, the numbers have been quite overwhelming, but the performances as well. He's always a player that you felt could do something when he started a game or was brought mm. on in a game. But there was never a sense that he was doing it every week and also there was all, always this feeling because you remember right Wren bought him um, when they sold Rafinha to Leeds but they bought him that they really pushed a boat out on him they spent nearly 30 mil on him which is and a, he was a, very a I mean, he's, young now. he's only 21 now yeah so and he, was, he was 18 when yeah. they bought him the sense was very much we're buying him mm -hmm. to mould him into something and then sell him to a Premier League club but it felt like there wasn't quite enough moulding. I was surprised they sold him for such a high price and to Manchester City at that point. But obviously, you know, Guardiola knew exactly what he wanted and that he was ready mm. for but it. But you not think, though, with a, with a player like Doku, you know, we've, we've seen this before, very much so, you know, Manchester City, well, Pep Guardiola, I should say, playing for him, you've got to get it. 
You've yeah. got to get the pet way. I mean, yeah. I, know, I know you could say that with a number of other managers, but he's the ultimate example of that. And some players take a, a bit of time. Some players they know are going to be a bit longer to, to, to do that. You know, Grealish, for example, huge money he came for, and it took him a, a while to bed him in. Whereas Doku, the, the, the minutes he's been playing and so on, it seems like he's got it. Yeah, and I think as well, if you look at Manchester City generally in the in, in the transfer market, um, Holland is the, the gimme, I suppose. Mm. He, he was he was the one that you knew would just be plug and play. But so many players who they buy, you think I, 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 I'm not really sure what what, what they're doing here. It, it's like, you, look, you look at Kanji. He was hopeless at Dortmund. Really? Like he, he arrived with loads of potential. He was awful but for most but... of the time here, and you thought, why on earth are they buying him? And he becomes. But he's looking at those characteristics. Incredible. It, again, it's it's. I agree with you, but it's because of these signings. Uh, because of these signings, it's it, it's that classic, you know, to quote Sir Ralph Ramsey. I don't pick the best players. I pick the players I need. Yes. And you've got to fit exactly. the system. And so and so therefore, if you're playing sort of, I don't know, fantasy football, they might not be the best Ooh. ones, as you say. If a Kanji goes to some other sides, will he light up that team, or will he make a big? Difference? I mean, I realize they've not... I realize they've got all money, more money than God, and all the other stuff. Mm. But the strategy is incredible. Yeah. Well, this is what's so impressive about it, isn't it? I mean, um, I think it's more than just. Pep Guardiola as well. There's obviously a team of people that sure. look at these yeah. characteristics and the personalities exactly. of the players involved as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, You know, if you are a club with huge, huge resources, we've seen so many times it's not as simple as mm. just go out and get Galacticos. Mm. You get mm. the odd one like Haaland. You'd probably put yeah. Grealish in that category as well, certainly within this country. Um, Audrey, but yeah, the, yeah, sure. the talent ID is yeah. spectacular. Yeah. They get it so right yeah, yeah, so often. Yeah. It's the character of the players yeah. as well, mm. not just the ability. Yeah. And Doku's such an interesting one, isn't he? Because, I mean, they've got him at 21 as well. He, mm. he, he he feels a lot older than that because yeah. he looks sort of just ready to go. He's got a sort of bit of history there. Um, and I, I guess the caveat that it, is that it's fairly, it's a fairly clear path for them to get a lot of players they want because of the, the money and the success they can offer. Yeah. Um, but I m- maybe I missed this or it wasn't on my radar. It doesn't seem like there was any sort of bidding war for Doku or there were sort of any other clubs really chasing him. They're so good at identifying a player and going... We we need this one. We'll get him, and it's it's not necessarily someone who's a mm. huge name, and it's it's yeah. it's I, a I, sign of how well run they are. I totally agree with you, and with regards to no bidding war, there might have been a man siege. Man, we'll take it from here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but but <laughs> I think West Ham put a bid in, and you know it's only going to go one way. Yeah, they, they they had to go a little bit higher than they wanted to because of of West Ham. But again, that's testament to what Manchester City do so well in terms of recruitment. Because I think if you're a Jeremy Doku type player, who by no means conquered Liga at all Mm -hmm. and wasn't arguably wasn't a lot of time in in, in Wren's best 11 Mm. you would sort of go West Ham is probably the the better intermediate step Mm -hmm. and in fact Man City convince you they convince you that that, that you're going to be a a big and important player and you're going to progress there and with a lot of big clubs you think no no I'm just going to get lost yeah I know what you mean and I I, I think that's it you know I was sort of making this point the other day, or maybe on the mailbag, was it? You know, it's, it, it, the system is king now, especially mm. with someone like Guardiola. Yeah. Um, do you worry for for Jack Grealish though? Um, uh, Guardiola says he wants Grealish to be angry and fight for his place. Because if you are Grealish, um, you know, <laughs> again, Jesus, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, Look, the treble last year. Yeah, that's safe. That's in the bag. <laughs> okay, he's not going to lose the treble, but I mean, you know, he's. Um, is he will have to fight for his place with, with, if Doku starts putting in performance? I isn't, know isn't, it's only at that... home to Bournemouth, and of course Man City are always going to hammer a, a team like that at home because they're so good. But I mean, he got ten out of ten on Sky Sports player ratings. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And if if, it, if, that, if that's a regular thing, then forgive me. I don't often check them, but it kind of popped out to me that it, you know. With Grealish, though, is, isn't that part Lakeith of? Lakeith probably said he wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, solid five. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think isn't that part of playing for Manchester City? And that must yeah. be the most psychologically difficult bit of mm. playing for Manchester. The city, the fact that you're going to have those dip seasons, yeah, you know, unless you're Holland or, or Edison, you know, or, or at least those dip part of seasons mm-hmm. where you know De Bruyne's had it, yeah. where he's, yeah. he's not been an important player all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Was, you forget he's missing, I know, the way yeah. they're playing. Did we you ever... see, did we see him on the touchline on the weekend? He, we? he looked like he'd come out of hibernation, <laughs> but, but basically just had like a binge on a video game. Right. He, right. Lo- he looks wonderful in normal clothes. I know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hilarious. We talked about this. We even mentioned Bernardo Silva and how well he played. Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> their fifth goal, they basically scored twice. <laughs> that's how dominant they were. That's ridiculous. why it was given a 6 1, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, okay, if never I can... scored at the end. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, Alvarez lost a tooth in one of the celebrations. See this? Yeah. Bernardo Silva apparently pointed out to him, um, I think. 
you got a bit overexcited there. I don't know whether it was a falsy, maybe, because I think if you'd have lost the tooth, you might go, oh, I'm a bit sure of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. As well. yeah. Anyway, we, we need to um, have further confirmation on that. So, yeah, another another thumping win for Man City, who are currently top of the league. But, of course, Spurs do play tonight against um, Chelsea. Did you see that Pochettino uh, said before he uh, returned to his old stomping ground? He was asked, uh, would you ever manage Spurs again? He went, ah. Oh, I mean, you never know what the future holds. I mean, yeah, maybe I could see one day. It's just like, you really don't want to get booed, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wonder if you automatically end up talking shit once you'd be sitting in a seat that Jose mm. Mourinho sat on. You know, involuntarily talking smack. Mm. I, I think it just happens. Yeah. Well, Angie's surviving. Be. Angie's not doing that. Maybe that's why he doesn't sit down as much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's always standing, Angie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was about to say content in between, but then Mourinho, anyway, you get lost, don't you? Um, right, gentlemen, I'd like to, to, to end uh, the show with a bit of FA Cup first round proper chat. Um, of course, the first round of the FA Cup kicked off this weekend. And we we can't go through all the um, big results and so on because we would just be listing them off and it would be here. But but um, Craig Valley Pepper, uh, Paper Mills, uh, the wonderfully named Craig Valley Paper Mills uh, from the Isthmian League Southeast Division drew one all with Charlton. Uh, they had to play eight games just to get to the first round and they've got a replay. Glorious. Wow. And that's a Amazing. proper a replay that, that just happened. They didn't need to request it, so well done to them. <laughs> um, elsewhere, uh, National League, Aldershot put seven past League Two Swindon side. They hammered the Swindon lot, Jim. I mean, it was... Have you, have you, if you've seen the highlights... Um, sorry, let me do that, do that again. If you haven't seen the highlights, the absolute silk from the <laughs> shots, as they call themselves, is incredible. <laughs> it's, it makes no sense yeah. that this is a team from a lower division. Totally. They're just absolutely having the time of their lives, just tearing it up. Yeah. Against the league Some side. Beautiful goals in there. Yeah, I mean... But, just it's glorious stuff, but, Andy. But you know, there, there was a lot of chat last week about, uh, in the Coupe de France, Thionville going uh, 16,000 kilometres. Yeah. To, yeah, well, to, 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 yeah. to play in New Caledonia yeah. and you know that's a that's a feature of the, the mm. Coupe de France and so obviously you get loads of people like me going it's an incredible cup competition because of France's overseas territories mm. and you get loads of shocks in Second it and all the rest of it you did an impression you were doing an impression of you I was yeah. doing an impression of me <laughs> yeah love that and I, I think the FA Cup has seen that and go right Best cup competition in the world, eh? We'll show you what the best cup competition <laughs> yes, in, the, yes, yes. In, in the world is. It had a mega weekend, absolutely mega weekend. It's Charlie Austin got two goals as well. Yes, yeah. It's also good that we're cancelling replays now because it affects eight teams. <laughs> <laughs> right oh, yeah, good old all the shot. We should say that the highest ranked side in uh, round one, Portsmouth, were knocked out by non league Chesterfield. This was, of course, when Luke messaged the group, invited us all <laughs> yeah. to turn on ITV and say, look, get a load of this. That a side who hasn't lost since March is playing, who are top of their division, blah de blah blah You knew and, it was coming at that point, And didn't good you? old Chesterfield biffed them 1-0. Former Pompey man Tom Naylor scored the goal and apologised, Andy. Did you see him put his uh... hands up to the Portsmouth fans? Oh, sorry about that. I'll leave. I, I don't think that's fine. It's a, it's a player to player case, isn't it? If they feel more like Lukaku did it when he scored against West Brom and he was there for six months, but he would said it was a really impactful. The worst one I, was Scott Sinclair. Yeah, yeah. Swansea when he scored against Chelsea. I would do. He barely I would kick the ball. For I would do it um, at a bigger club as possible, but unreasonably. So if I if I was playing like Real Madrid <laughs> in a preseason friendly, I'd score. And, so if, oh, God, it used to be a Real Madrid. Yeah, or maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's because he's going to go there. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. But anyway, it was a brilliant win for Chesterfield. Um, lovely to see Chesterfield winning cup games for those of us who remember the nineties. We we should say as well, talking of games in in or non league teams, we were messages by quite a few people. There was a non league game in Scotland between Dunipace and Whitburn. Uh, it was abandoned um, or the weekend just gone after the Dunipace uh, physio was punched by a Whitburn player. Who tends to a physio if he's hurt? Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe that's what the, the the point the player was trying to make. Oh, he went oh, to the source. Yeah. yeah. Fix yourself. <laughs> yeah. So um, we shouldn't, we don't condone that, do no, we? No, we don't. But it was messaged quite a lot. It seemed like quite an odd happening. It happened deep into injuries <laughs> in the second half, I believe. Maybe he took that very literally. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> like the purge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He created the injury. Here we time. go, Les. It's injury time. <laughs> Scottish. <laughs> Whatever. That's injury time. <laughs> this is my time. 
<laughs> and, and there we are. I'd watch that instead of fucking. Yeah. What was the film we talked about? Green Street, Green Mile. Oh, we different films. Green <laughs> Street, only very, very different. <laughs> very different. Yeah. You got to do the Green Mile up Green Street. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, a bit like dear. the Otley Run. <laughs> yeah, and then you get to the Green Goblin. I don't know. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Willem Dafoe. There we are. You see, but it wasn't the title of the film. No. But it was. It it's not about him. But he's in the film family. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the films. Um, um, and I said that, of course, we would, I said we would finish um, with um, a bit of FA Cup. First but while we're proper. talking about the Greens. Well, uh, yeah, Andy we, Brassel. We, we're, we're not finishing, Marcus. We are coming to the headline act. Mm. Consider this a hidden track, if you will. Um, <laughs> Portland Timbers, the official Ramble MLS side, we should say. And the mm. reason why they're the official MLS side is because our man Eric, of course, who's from that part of the world, marvellous man, has done marvellous things at Portland Timbers Ground by playing the Ramble theme tune out on the loudspeaker mm. system there. Um, he also gave us freebies at our Chicago uh, live which show. Which you love. Which you? I bloody love. Um, what, don't you? Yeah, I do, but you're well into it. Though, <laughs> yeah. I, well, I just, I sort of speak on behalf of the group for that kind of thing. I mean, we are open for offers, basically. Yeah, sure. I know there was a Seattle Sounders fan who got in touch with me. He was very ha- unhappy about this. And I said, well, state your case, sir. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I mean. <laughs> So the Portland Timbers, we haven't even got to the crux of this. Why are you going on about MLS sides? They are reportedly in advanced talks to higher field level as their head coach. And it's not gone down well, is it? <laughs> there are protests. <laughs> Again, what's what's good for the Ramble may not be good for your club. <laughs> Can I make a small prediction? Yeah, that, uh, he's running on the beaches by Tuesday. Of, of course, the fact is that Portland Timbers didn't make the uh, MLS playoffs. Yes. So they're officially out of season. I think Phil Neville gets this job, mm. gets fired, and is LA Galaxy coach by the start of next season. It has to be on the coast, Andy, as we know. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because he does love those beach runs. He does. Mm. It's quite cold in Portland, though, isn't it? Well, Fizzer will get things warmed up. <laughs> There's a party in Portland. And you're bloody invited. <laughs> I'm not going. No one's sleeping tonight. I'm not going. But Portland, they are Portland's gonna a very be... sort of hipstery area, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. fits in there. He won't get any of it. He it, won't. Yeah, so, that's uh, true. Uh, like, so after after the Leo Messi thing uh, into Miami, is this why Damian Lillard's left Portland already? I think so, yeah. Doesn't want to be He'd involved. rather be in Milwaukee than, <laughs> than Portland. Why is everyone activating charcoal? What's, 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 what's going on here? <laughs> to be fair, talking of like... They love their coffee here. Talking of Milwaukee, when we went on our US tour, Pete stayed behind for a couple of days so he could go to Milwaukee. Didn't yeah. he do that once where he he stayed in the US? Or maybe this is the same thing because he wanted to keep driving on the other side of the road. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, he's currently on his way back from Dortmund, not for De Classica. So none of this is... <laughs> and I not, just, not I for just, the Newcastle game I just, either. I, just, I, loved, <laughs> I loved the response of our tour agent who was out there when we told him. He's an American guy who lives in New York, very much in New York. And he just looked at us and he went, but he's gone... Yeah, and we were like, yeah, he just, he's just staying behind again. And he goes, I mean, Milwaukee's nice, but it's not like, hey, I gotta go there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've outstayed our welcome. Or have we? It's our bloody feed. Uh, thanks very much for listening <laughs> to the Football Ramble, part of the ACAST Creator Network. Luke and Vish are back tonight for Ramble Reacts following Tottenham versus Chelsea. Do follow us on X, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at Football Ramble. Don't forget to subscribe on your podcast app. Thank you, Andy. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Vish. Thank you. And thank you, Milwaukee. See you soon, everybody. Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.